Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. Over the past year, I've seen an explosion of people talking about Cloudflare tunnels. Now, those are good, but that's not the point of this video. This video is about addressing some of the concerns with Cloudflare tunnels. Now, Christian Lemper put out a video about three months ago, which was great because it called out some of the concerns that I, as a security professional, had before I started my micro YouTube career. So I wanna go over some of those concerns again, but I wanna take it a step further. I wanna show you how we can put in some additional layers of security to try and strike a happy medium. Now, don't get me wrong, Cloudflare tunnels are a cool feature. It's great that they're free and that they're provided by Cloudflare, who are one of the leading security providers. And that does in some cases instill you with some confidence. But let's go over the problems and let's talk about how we can solve them and then I'll show you how to actually go and do that within a Docker environment. So if you haven't seen Christian's video, I'll link that below and I recommend you go and check that out because he put together some good points. Chiefly, one of his points was around privacy, which I agree with. Cloudflare are gonna be able to see all of the traffic that comes into your network. But for me, that wasn't the only concern. As somebody who works in security, I know the importance of having layers of security and having a Cloudflare tunnel is great if you can't port forward because it gives you the ability to actually expose services, but it kind of is port forwarding, except you're putting all the control into Cloudflare. Now, as I said, they are one of the best security vendors in the world, but at the same time, you don't just wanna have one layer of security. So what can we do? Well, in a nutshell, what we want to do is to segment our internal network. So whilst we're not gonna be port forwarding and wouldn't have a traditional DMZ, demilitarized zone, we wanna try and recreate that. So what do I mean by that? Well, we're gonna have our Cloudflare tunnel come into our server infrastructure, but we're gonna put that on its own VLAN. We're gonna then route that traffic through an internal firewall, which will have all the nice things like IDS and IPS then we could even route that traffic through something like CrowdSec through our reverse proxy. So it's also going to be using its threat-based intelligence to look at the traffic that's coming through. Now, one of the key problems is we're not going to be able to do anything fancy due to the IP not being forwarded through that tunnel. So we don't know where this traffic originated. We can put some blocks on at the Cloudflare level and that should take care of it. But on our infrastructure, we're not going to have that possibility. So there are limitations to some of the things I'm going to show you today, but overall we're going to incorporate new layers of security with new scanning. So hopefully this should reduce the chance that anything nasty gets through and it will give you granular control over what this tunnel is going to have access to. So let's jump into it. So if I head over to my Portana on my local network, you can see that this is running fine. It's running through my traffic proxy and everything is working as it should. And if I now go over to my virtual machine, which is set up on a VPN using NordVPN, and I try the same thing, that record's not found. That's because the service isn't publicly exposed. It's on a different entry point within traffic. And also there's no record on Cloudflare, which is my domain provider, to give you my external IP to access this. So there's two barriers to that. So let me show you what happens when I create a Cloudflare tunnel. So if I go over to Cloudflare and go into their zero trust module, on the left hand side, if I go into access, tunnels, and then add a tunnel, I can start to open up my internal only service to the web so that anyone could reach it. To do that, I'd simply give it a name. I'm gonna call it Portainer. I hit save, and then it's gonna ask me to install the connector. So in this instance, it's Docker, and it's gonna ask me to copy this command and run it. But I'm gonna turn this into a Docker Compose file because we're gonna need that for my proposed solution. So the key bit here I want to copy is just this bit after the token, which is the token. So I'm gonna copy all of this. I'm then gonna head over to my Docker VM and I'm gonna paste this whole command into a Compose file. Now taking that Docker run command and Composifying it, it looks something like this. Now, the reason I've done this is because I'm gonna come back to it in a minute and add something called a Mac VLAN. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna deploy it. And when I deploy it, it's gonna give me access to Portana on my virtual machine, which is on the VPN, which as I said, Portana should not be exposed. 
Okay, so I've navigated to the same location as the Docker Compose file, and I'm gonna run this command. Now that I've run this command, we can go back to Cloudflare, and we can go to the next stage of deployment. Now it's gonna ask us to give it a subdomain and what the local IP address or DNS name is. So in this case, it's gonna be Portana. I'll quickly fill that out. So here I've set the details, and the important bit is specifying the internal IP address, which I've opened it up to HTTP 9000 for this demo. And with any luck, when I save this tunnel, give it a few seconds to refresh, it should come up here that the tunnel is healthy. We'll see that built. That's good. So now portainer.jimsgarage.co.uk should be accessible from the internet. So let's jump back onto my VM, which has a VPN enabled, and let's just test that. So back over on my VM, I should now be able to hit the reload button and we should get to the login page for Portainer. And here you can see that I now have access to that internal only service through a Cloudflare tunnel. And if you don't believe me, you can see on my mobile phone here, I'm on 5G and I've also got access to the same Portainer instance. So what can we do to bring back some layers of security? Well, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna hop back into Docker now. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a Mac VLAN. So what's a Mac VLAN? Well, effectively you're creating your container as though it were a physical device on your network. So it's no longer bridging on the host. It's basically being set up as though it's got its own network interface card. And as you can see on the screen, we're able to put it on a separate VLAN and even specify things like its MAC address and its IP address. So when your firewall or switch sees this, it sees it as a distinctly separate device to your Docker host. So to get that up and running, I've got the command here. We're gonna create a MAC VLAN. It's come up with a subnet. I've chosen a subnet that I want it on and this subnet already exists on my firewall. I'll show you the firewall settings in a little bit. I've put in the gateway for that subnet. I've said which is its parent ethernet adapter. Now you'll need to find this by going onto your Docker host and doing IP A, which will show all your interfaces. If I scroll up here, it's gonna be number two in my instance because this is the IP address of the Docker host that I'm using. And I know it's only got one virtual NIC, which the VM thinks is a physical NIC, and it's EMP6 S18. That's not a nice naming convention, but there is a logic to that. We'll come onto it on another video. So I need to copy this here and I need to paste it into here. And now I can run this command in the terminal and it will create this Docker VLAN. So with that paste in the terminal, when I hit return, it's gonna create the Mac VLAN and I'll run that now and I'll show you in Portainer what that looks like. So back over in Portainer, this is what the Mac VLAN looks like. And you can see that those values have been taken and they're now part of this Mac VLAN configuration. So let's head back into the Docker Compose for the Cloudflare tunnel. And importantly, before I did this, I made sure that Mac VLAN 4, i.e. anything on the dot .4 slash 24 network cannot reach the 200 that my Portainer is running on. So if we just remind ourselves Portana for this demo has been set up on my VLAN 200 with the 200 in the name here. And within my Sophos firewall, I've made sure that Mac VLAN 4, my VLAN 4, cannot communicate to 200 at all. So now back into our Docker Compose file, there's a few tweaks we need to make to this. Basically what we're gonna do is set up this container to go onto Mac VLAN 4. And thankfully to do that, it's really straightforward. We simply need to add this section here, which if you followed my previous videos before, you'll be more than familiar with how the networks work. We've specified a network, it's called Mac VLAN 4. We've given it an IP address. You don't have to do that. It will dynamically assign it if you've got DHCP set up on that VLAN. And we've said that it's an external. So now if I go and force recreate this container, we should see that when I refresh the page on my VM, I'm no longer able to access it. So this has now created that container again. So let's head back into my VM and just double check that. So here you can see it's being cached and it's working. When I refresh this, it should come up with a Cloudflare error that's attributed on the right hand side to the host. Let's see if that works. And just as expected, 
I've got a host error here. Now that's because the Cloudflare tunnel is up and working, Cloudflare end is absolutely fine, but when it gets to my tunnel on my internal network, which is now on VLAN 4, I've specified in my firewall that VLAN 4 can't talk to 200, and so it comes back and says there's an error with the host, which is correct. So how would I fix this? Well, I simply need to hop into my firewall and create a rule from IP address 4.20 to 200.50. Those are the two respective IPs on the two respective VLANs. Let's go and do that quickly now. So over on my Sophos firewall, and don't worry, you don't have to be using Sophos for this. Any firewall will work, things like UDMs, etc. Anything where you can specify your own rule sets. We simply want to make a rule that allows traffic from our Mac VLAN 4 to Mac VLAN 200, or whatever it is you're using in your case. It doesn't have to be those numbers. So with this rule here configured, I've called it Cloudflare to Portana. I've put it at rule position top just for this demonstration, but you choose a suitable location for that. I've said the source zone is a LAN and this is a Sophos terminology, but the main thing is I've got the source device, which is that 4.20, as you can see on the screen, and it's going to, again, the LAN destination zone. And in this case, it's going to my Docker Proxmox VM, which is the 200.50 you can see on the screen. And the important thing is, it's only allowing it on HTTP traffic, which is going to be on port 80. So now we've got a bit more granular control over what that Cloudflare can access. And if ever it were to be breached, it can only reach that machine on port 80. Now we can even go a step further, especially if you've got something like a next gen firewall, like my Sophos XG is. And I can turn on things like IDS and IPS, so that's intrusion detection and intrusion prevention. So whilst Cloudflare is no doubt going to be doing some of that for you, it's great to have another vendor that's doing another load of scanning, because that's how we can incorporate those layers of security back into our network stack. So I've edited this rule now to include IDS and IPS, and I've put some signatures in there for common web-based attacks. So if I now go and hit save, we'll let that apply. I should now be able to go back into my VM, hit that page refresh, and we should be able to access Portana once more. But this time, crucially, with more scanning and more control on our own network. And jackpot. You can see that we're now back into Portana, but crucially, that traffic is now routed through my NextGen firewall and it's doing all of its scanning and it's gonna give us a lot more confidence that we're scanning the traffic that comes into our network. And this also means that for those of you who don't have the port forwarding capability and you think, I'll never need a firewall, you could obviously put a firewall on your internal network and then scan all of your traffic. So that wouldn't just protect you from things like Cloudflare tunnels, but also rogue devices on your network or malware that you download onto your laptop, etc. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. And I hope you found that useful because I think it's important to get some control if you're going to be using Cloudflare tunnels. Don't get me wrong, they're an awesome technology and it might be the only thing that you've got if you can't do port forwarding due to things like carry grade NAT. Do check out my headscale video if you're struggling with that because I think that's a better solution. However, with what I've showed you today in being able to route that Cloudflare tunnel through a next-gen firewall, you should get some more confidence over what traffic is coming into your network and be able to break this up a little bit so that if anything does go wrong, hopefully it should limit the impact. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you soon. Take care everybody.